Hi, in this video we're going to look at how to prove that the derivative of the cotangent inverse function of x, derivative with respect to x of that, is negative 1 over x squared plus 1. So that's a derivative that we memorized um, a week ago, but we were not yet able to prove it. We uh, now have the tools though that we can go ahead and prove this. So the video right before this I did a kind of similar thing for the sine inverse function and we're just going to look at another example. Basically all six of the inverse trig functions, the proofs are similar in structure. Okay, so if you remember what we did in the last one, we started by saying let's let y equal this function that we're working on here, the cotangent inverse function here, and then we applied the inverse function to both sides. So uh, the function I have here is cotangent inverse, the inverse function of that would be the cotangent function. So I'm going to apply the cotangent function to both sides and the goal of that is that the function and its inverse on the right hand side undo each other so that expression that we have next would be cotangent y on the left side equals just x on the right hand side here and then if you remember what we also did in the last video we then used implicit differentiation. So if I just differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to x, I'm going to write that differential operator in bright red here. Derivative with respect to x of cotangent y on the left is going to equal derivative with respect to x of x on the right. And now I'm just going to do the implicit differentiation. So the derivative of the cotangent function, uh, we can prove that by using quotient rule and the derivatives of sine and cosine, those two derivatives come straight from the definition of the derivative with the limit as h approaches zero. Okay, so I can go ahead and do this derivative on the left side here. Derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant squared of y times the derivative of what's inside, that's the implicit differentiation part. And then on the right side I just get 1 and we're going to solve for dy dx. Alright, so when I divide through by negative cosecant squared of y, I'll get negative 1 over cosecant squared of y. Alright, but I want my expression to be in terms of x here. Uh, so just like in the last one, we're going to use an identity, Pythagorean identity. Um, so most students don't remember perfectly the, all the different variations of Pythagorean identity, but if you can just remember kind of the basic one, sine squared theta, or in this case I'll use y, plus cosine squared theta, or y in this case equal to 1, then you can just rearrange uh, that identity to get the appropriate one for cosecant squared. Uh, so cosecant is 1 over sine, so if I take the Pythagorean identity that I've written down over here to the side and then divide through everything by sine squared of y, then I get another identity. Uh, cosine squared over sine squared would be cotangent squared of y, and 1 over sine squared of y is cosecant squared of y. And so then I can go back to what I had uh, with my work in the proof here and replace the cosecant squared of y on the denominator with uh, the Pythagorean identity. All right, and then we're almost done here. We can realize that at a step in the problem earlier, I had cotangent of y is equal to x. So if I just use that step, and then in the end of my work here, if I just replace the cotangent of y with what we have it equal to, x, we get what we were supposed to get, that the derivative of our y function, which was our cotangent inverse function, with respect to x is what we wanted. So that completes the proof, QED.